had problems with navigation. GPS not working properly. Uh, I think, I sincerely think like the, because we're awake for so much time, uh, this also went to our heads because we started to argue. We started to doubt our navigation, we started to doubt the map and then the GPS and it was like different. So we are really, really tired. Uh, we are like covered with sweat. I'm getting cold. I need to eat something. 36 hours is just, it, it's too much. I don't know, it, it's hard to think, hard to focus. I don't know if we can continue with this place. I already have blisters. We are really tired. Um, long story short, Fucked up, we're seriously fucked up. guys we're back to fucking Poland again we're here at Lake Piechota the light infantry competition if you don't know if you didn't see our first video this is an extreme light infantry competition where you had to shoot navigate perform tasks and this is all done without a stop for 36 hours this year so <laughs> additional 12 hours I don't know how we will do it um, but we're excited yeah we are. are we yeah. <laughs> Of course we are. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> it's Friday in the evening, 9 p.m. We're walking to the designated area where we will start with our competition. This will be the first hour of 36 hours of the competition. And the first task is canoeing or kayaking down the river at night, of course. Since we have some time to walk there, Let's just go through um, some of the equipment changes that we did from last year. So what we're wearing, we're wearing Helicon Tex. Uh, I think these are the OTP pants. They're from this kind of uh, very thin and very flexible material. Why well, it's really good because it's light. And when you get wet, if you are walking and, and moving, your body heat actually dries it up. So. That's a big improvement over the last year because the Euro Pro pants, they are great quality pants. But when they, go, they get wet or when they, when they get muddy, they are very heavy and they cannot dry that quickly. Uh, the guns, we're using the same guns as last year. I have the Scope LPVO from Primary Arms, the Raptor, 1 to 8. We'll see if this will give us any edge on uh, the long range targets. Otherwise, it's just <laughs> additional weight. <laughs> For navigating this year, I have this um, admin pouch from Helicontex. It's not really an admin pouch. They sell it as some kind of bushcraft thingy, whatever. Why I like, is, like it is because I can open it up like this. I have my phone here. And this year, we're going fully digital. We'll still have the map. I still have the, the compass for backup. But um, hopefully, we'll just use the GPS map I have the preloaded area here, so the maps are preloaded, don't need the internet, and just walk by this. This is a Helicon chest rig, it's very minimalistic, very light. Um, last year I was, uh, I was carrying a Tasmanian Tiger chest rig with the plate in it. The idiot. Oh, why the bags? Uh, the bags, <laughs> yeah. Last year, when we went through the tunnel, um, I accidentally lost all my mags and they went into a mud so the magazines were so dirty so muddy yeah, yeah. we had to took them apart and actually wash every single round, round yeah. and every single part of the magazine put them together and then shoot so that that took a lot of time i also reduced weight from uh, with my belt um, this year i'm using a helicontex belt it's simple belt not like last year with, uh, when i was using a battle belt, a thick, I call it a diaper, because it really is thick and heavy, so I hope this will help. This year we're using pretty much the same holster, we're going with uh, battle known solutions, level 2 retention, just in case I don't want to lose my handgun, very simple works, 
That's it. So we are at the point here, we're preparing for the first special task, canoeing at night. And during the canoeing we have to do some reconnaissance. Hopefully we won't drown. These are for energy, caffeine and some other stuff for concentration. This will really help us out after 20 hours when we're really tired, so it's a booster. Fuck off. <laughs> oh fuck. Your Royal Marines. <laughs> Navy! Kayak Marines. Kayak, kayak Marines. So this is actually very important. Uh, before the canoeing, we want to protect our uh, boots. Because if these get wet, the next 36 hours, will be absolutely nightmare. thought that the canoeing task would be the easiest part of the competition. Well, we were wrong. <coughs> Just minutes after the start, a team capsized. Then another team take in water. What seems to be a silly mistake can cost you the competition and it did for at least two teams that had to tap out early on. Since the cameraman didn't fit in the canoe, the organizers had to drive him around to the certain points of the river to take footage. Okay, watch out. Since the canoeing task was 17 kilometers long, it was a challenge even for them to find the competitors despite using the GPS trackers with every team. What seemed to be an easy task proved to be quite challenging. The small river that we were paddling on was full of underwater obstacles like branches, low hanging bridges and logs obstructing our path. Hello. 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 Is this the end? No. This is they had to swim over here and find uh, find us and write d details about us. There was one guy with a gun, one with night vision oh. and flares going off and they had to find a car. We have uh, uh, another team uh, managed to turn, uh, turn around. We managed to capture a backpack. Oh, you have a backpack, him? Yeah, but we can't bring it because it's not enough. It's not enough because it's not enough water. Wait, okay. I call you. One of the team slip over to water. One of the teams that capsized lost a backpack. It was swept down the river. Despite having a GPS tracker in the backpack, it was hard to find and was finally retrieved by another team. We were so desperate, 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 we were so desperate. 
Another team had to finish the competition because they were completely wet and just too cold to continue. The morale is high, we are all wet, cold, we scared a lot of fishermen there, that was fun. All I need is to step on a rusty nail. Pretty <laughs> funny, bro? Yes. My back is wet because water came up. Um, I can feel my fingers, but at least we came to the finish line. Let me tell you a fun story about some fishermen. When we came to the lake, we uh, turned uh, turned out our flashlights, so we were in complete darkness. We started to row quietly, and then we met up with our Italian friends that both had night visions and our plan was to um, we had to do reconnaissance to find some smugglers or something that we were told uh, by the organizer so we immediately spot some lights nearby and we start to slowly and in complete darkness row quietly towards the lights you know and when we co come closer we see a couple of people, a car, and we say like, oh, this is it, you know, like we have to start writing down information and everything. And then when we are close enough, we stop rowing, so we are very quiet. We're just slowly drifting on the lake. <laughs> when we are, I would say, maybe 20 meters from them, <laughs> someone comes near the water, and <laughs> we just row just a bit to stop, and like he gets scared as fucking shines the light at us and starts to scream something in Polish and, <laughs> and we shine the light and they were like fishermen. With an outside temperature of only 5 degrees Celsius and us being almost completely wet, it was crucial to get our gear fast, move to the next point and change clothes. Fuck. So what is happening now? <laughs> We're wet when you stop moving. We start to lose heat very fast. And right now we don't have time to change clothes. But uh, we have to layer up to keep the warmth that we have and not lose more. <laughs> <laughs> Did you step on a frog? <laughs> it's 5.30 in the morning, we're back at the range and we have half an hour before the start of the competition and since this is free time uh, we are you know just replenishing the energy we're eating, um, doing the isotonic drinks, maybe some proteins so when we start we are full full on and just like go. So yes. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the grids to each point by measuring the distances 
in millimeters and then I'm gonna uh, multiply it by 10. I, uh, I was taught that by my good friend Ange. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the coordinates that Luca got from the map and I'm uh, inputting them in our navigation app. After carrying the motors, we started with the first part of navigation. We are full of energy. We selected the points yeah. and started walking. We were making good time finding the points, but there was already foreshadowing of the problems with the navigation. The digital app didn't completely agree with the map and this also made us doubt the accuracy of the points that we manually inserted into the app. Despite all of this, we were able to push through and find six navigation points, which is great. Okay, uh, which target? White. White? Which one? Yeah, It's gone. There's no more target. It's gone. Hey! The target is gone. Watch out! Next page. Okay. Now what? Where do we go now? There? Oh. Philip is going to study. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh. Okay. We know how to belay on this. Uh, yes. Okay. I see! Ne omazat puške! Wat jou push kan houden. Drie het hartje. Oké, kom hier, 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 hier. Was dat altijd hit? Okay. We shoot. Fast. Okay. We see them, guys. Tip at Strela. We see them, guys. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey,
We just finished the first shooting window, we barely made it, we missed a couple of minutes and then uh, the first uh, RO didn't speak English and we lost at least 20 seconds for no reason because he didn't know how to explain the stuff and we started to shoot and we just rushed it. Uh, we cleared every stage except the last one with the machine gun, with the PKM because the shooting, the whole shooting video uh, uh, window, the whole shooting window, the 30 minutes was over. So we had to stop and uh, we got two misses on that. Everything else we cleared it and I think that's really good. It's six stages and we also did six points um, for the first navigation. Really good, but I don't know if we can continue with this pace. I already have blisters, we are really tired. Um, a lot of sore stuff, I don't know. <sighs> we have to push on. And this is where the problems started. It was not navigation, it was us. We were tired, we started to doubt each other and we started to argue. Instead of using only one technique, we started to switch between the app and the map with a compass. Luca thought that I was complicating. I was getting annoyed and thought that Luca should do some navigating to see that it's not that easy. We missed the turn and went out of our way. Halfway towards a point, we figured that we are in the wrong direction and just decided off the bat to change to which point we are going. Now I know this was a result of being tired, cold and have a sleepless night. It seems silly until you're in that situation. I'm just, I'm just so angry, so disappointed. I don't know how to explain it. It's just like we fucked up. We seriously fucked up. We had problems with navigation. GPS was not working properly. Uh, I think, I sincerely think, like the because we're awake for so much time, uh, this is also went to our heads because we started to argue. We started to doubt our navigation, we started to doubt the map and then the GPS and it was like different. So long story short, we only got one point and we missed 
most of our shooting window. We managed to do two stages, barely, but this is, this is a big failure. This was an absolute hammer blow to our morale. But what can you do? You can drink water, change socks, and just keep on pushing. Next navigation went a little bit better. We tried to problem solve, we tried to not argue and capture the points that are further away from camp. The long distance walking helped us clear our minds and focus on the task. We didn't know at the time, but the fourth point that we found was actually a decoy. Mm. Okay. So we are really, really burning it right now because we have less than 50 minutes left and I think we can make another point before we have to return to the base. It will be very close, but um, I think it's worth it, even if we miss a couple of minutes of our shooting time. Luca, regroup, let's go. My part of the job is to chase the, the guys, the guys from the teams uh, when they are doing the navigation. I got you! I would say that this was one of the most challenging shooting parts of this competition where you had very narrow, small openings in the shooting barricade and you had to hit the targets at more than 100 meters away. The target was a small gong and the trick here was not to hit the barricade. I could say that this was the strangest shooting position that ever worked for me and the primary arms LTVO helped out. Fuck yeah! A PSA from Polar Tactical. Kids, watch out about your hot suppressors. They can really burn you and it sucks. Go! One gun. Second gun. Oh, fuck.
ga ustrelo, streho, streho strelo. Ne, ste. Ja si ustrelo si strelo. Third one, second one is done. Thank you. That's it? Okay. And now uh, I'm not sure if you hit it. No, okay, in a deal. Ping, ping, ah, okay, ping. Okay. Then it was just the blast, the buzzer yeah. blast. But I saw it like the roof move and I thought that it was something like this. Thank you, bye. Okay. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. It was the best, best score here. The so best? Really? Best, yeah. You, you, you were closest to getting the 20, uh, 30. We yeah. would if I would not fuck you. One person in the book. Uh -huh. One person. One? One person, yes. Oh. Touching the wrong. This to spread it was Okay. <laughs> it's crazy hot. I think this shooting stage shortened my lifespan for at least five years. So much of the gas that I breathe in hot help. No shoots. No, 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 no. Okay. Leva, Leva. day part of navigating and the last shooting window is over. Uh, I think it's uh, around um, 8 p.m. We are really really tired. Uh, 
As you can see, we are like covered with sweat. I'm getting cold. I need to eat something. I have a lot of blisters. It was very rough. Uh, but the last navigating window, we at least were able to get a couple of more points. Uh, the shooting window, we barely caught it. Did good shooting. Um, not perfect. Not the way that we imagined, but. It is what it is. Um, the extra extra 12 hours with the kayaking in the cold and night, it, it really, I think, drained a lot of energy and, and I don't know, it, it's hard to think, um, harder to think, it, it's harder to focus um, and we still have a whole night um, in, 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 in head of us. Yeah. Um, what's the plan right now? Eat, rehydrate, uh, I will put some new clothes on because it's getting cold and then we have navigating till 3 p.m. and then we have a night shooting window, window and then more navigating so <sighs> it will be a very <sighs> I don't know suffering During night navigation and night shooting, our cameraman was asleep. Surprisingly, that went super well. In the morning, 34 hours into the competition, we were cold, tired, but had to push on. We had to do the long range shooting to finish the competition. First at 250 meters, which was quite okay. successful. And then we moved on to 350 meters, which was really hard, but we were amazed to get at least one hit. I never thought I would say this, but it was more brutal than the last time. Despite being super tired, despite getting our ass kicked, um, this is still an amazing competition. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that we did it. Uh, it's just the ultimate test of, of your equipment, of your firearms, of your knowledge and skills and how everything combines under stress and under real use. Uh, it was amazing, now we are going to sleep. Thank you for watching guys and see you soon. Bye.